Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to What's Up Vlog 176, something like that. And this is the um, second time this week I've tried to come out for a nice gentle evening ride and had to cut about three kilometres in because I've got a ridiculous double vision going on, um, which is really annoying. Anyway, I'm not going to moan about that. What I want to talk about is gravel bikes. Is that the right term, gravel bikes? Adventure bikes. What would it, it's, a cycle, it's a cyclocross gravel adventure, that kind of bike. Um, I put a post up a little while ago on Facebook about uh, a couple of ideas that I had. It started as me just lusting after something else that I haven't got, which um, I do quite often, as a lot of you know. Uh, but there may actually be a genuine requirement, a genuine necessity, which helps me to justify buying another bike in my own head. But I'll, I'll come on to that in a minute. But anyway, so I'm looking for advice and guidance from anybody that either has experience of the three bikes I'm about to mention, good or bad experience, sorry, there's a spider about to climb on the lens, um, or any alternatives that I haven't considered in this list. So I have a couple of main requirements, firstly, two absolute essentials and one preference that isn't a total necessity. First essential, hydraulic disc brakes, absolute must. Second essential, SRAM or all the Shimano single chainring group sets. So the Rival, Force, SRAM, eight, uh, one by group sets are absolutely ideal for simplicity and lightness. And I just love the idea of one. And thirdly, and thirdly, this is the one that's a preference but not an essential, um, a titanium frame. I've always loved titanium bikes anyway. I just love the look of them. I think they're fantastic. And I would quite like something that is gonna be rugged, sturdy, stand the test of time, a kind of do all, do everything kind of bike. So, titanium frame, one by group set, hydraulic disc brakes. Uh, oh, and it has to be able to take say a 30, 32 mil plus tire. So 32 would be the absolute minimum tire size that it can take, but most of them take more than that anyway. So I started this conversation by uploading this bike here. Now this is the Ribble something something TI and I absolutely love it. I can get it with the SRAM Rival one by group set with hydraulic brakes, obviously titanium frame, and takes the right uh, tire sizes. As it turns out, this is the bike that Lawrence Carpenter's been using on that uh, on their Project USA ride that he's doing with Francis Cade and James, uh, Bike Fit Tuesday, James. I forget your surname, sorry, James. So I know you watch these videos, so please don't be offended. <laughs> of course you do. Um, and I, yeah, so this is the one that got me going, and I've spec'd it up with, with those components, and I can get it for about two and a half thousand pounds. So that's, that's quite a bit of money. And if this was just a play thing, then forget about it, far too much. Um, so then somebody then recommended this as a much more cost-effective alternative. And to be honest, it ticks all the boxes that the Ribble does. This is the Planet X on one pick and flick. Uh, they do another one as well, which might actually be preferable, but it's very similar in spec, but slightly more relaxed geometry, I think also titanium but basically the i can't remember what that one's called but basically either this one or the other one when specced up again with uh, all the items the uh, the components that i want this one comes in almost a thousand pounds cheaper so let's say a max max price really nicely specced up for about 17 1700 pounds so that kind of negates or kind of eliminates the ribble although the ribble uh, for some reason i still find and it's just a slightly nicer looking bike in my mind. Um, and finally, there's this one, which is a little bit from left field. It is, it's just dropped there, gorgeous. I just love the thing. Um, it's this, the Rondo Route CF2, I think is what it's called. Um, if I'm getting the names wrong compared to what's on your screen now, it's because I'm doing, obviously I haven't got the internet in front of me, so I'm doing this while I'm out and about. Um, but this is by far the lightest, full carbon frame. And it's got a bit of a, a trick front fork where you can, um, there's a little, I don't know what you call it, uh, a little coin type thing that you can undo, spin round, and that basically changes the geometry to more relaxed and more aggressive positions. 
whether that's a gimmick that, or whether it's something I would ever use, I have no idea, but as an overall package, again, this comes out a bit more expensive. I think this was 26, 27. Again, you'll be able to see the price on the screen and I can't. Um, so it's the more expensive option, but it's a very nice bike. What I don't know is whether that's a, more of a kind of cyclocross bike or whether it would work as a full on adventure, commuter, sort of comfortable road bike. But after having looked at these and researched them, one popped up of them in a magazine that I hadn't read for ages and I was just flicking through my old bike magazine and that is the, um, the GT Grade Pro, I think it is, is their top one, which very similar spec, comes in with all the same stuff and at a price similar to the Rondo route. So yeah, let me know if anyone's got any experience at any of these bikes or like I say, any alternatives that fit that mold, uh, please let me know. I'm, I'm really genuinely intrigued. And um, I'll tell you another another reason for justifying it, or, well, no, this isn't justification, but it's something that will put it to good use, is someone mentioned a gravel ride called the Dirty Reaver. And that looks just awesome. 200 odd kilometers, predominantly gravel. I'm sure it's an absolute leg killer, ass killer, everything, but it looks so much fun. Um, I, there are roads around here where I take my kids and the dog for walks pretty much every weekend and there's hardly a weekend's gone by where I haven't said I wish I had a bike that was good enough for these. There's some really lovely little gravelly trails and routes around this way. So that was my primary reason for wanting one but then this dirty reaver popped up and took things to the next level. Um, then as I mentioned earlier there could be a genuine reason for needing one. I have an opportunity that's presented itself which would require me to effectively commute, cycle commute. I love, at the, well I'm sitting in beautiful sunshine so at the moment I love the idea of that but I wouldn't be doing it on my Cervelo. So anyone that knows me knows my Cervelo, unless I absolutely have to, will not set a wheel outside the house unless it's beautiful weather. So this needs to be comfortable, rugged, all-purpose daily commute bike potentially, and a real gravel warrior and event adventure bike. That's another hankering I've really got, is doing a really long point-to-point -point adventure ride with a, with, a, you know, with a tent in a bag and a sleeping bag and a stopover. Doing, it, doing a proper adventure ride, maybe even Land's End John O'Groats at some point, but <laughs> I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Trouble is, I'm running out of years and time to do this. So, so, but it, I mean, I'm not getting too excited about this commuting thing because it it may not happen, and I'm not 100% sold on whether I would pursue it anyway. Uh, but it's something that could be really good for WKG, could be good for me personally, and just involve a little bit more working hours and actually having to leave my house on a regular basis. Right. I'm going to keep this one short and sweet, as short and sweet as I, as I possibly can. I will let you know about some new races. The first one is the Tea at the Top race, which is being scheduled for 18.45 British summertime every Monday. This one's really exciting and it's for the climbers. I, I think I touched on it on a previous video, but basically it's a race up out to Zwift. Every time out to Zwift is available. It may come a point where we utilize the world swap function within Zwift. Uh, I have requested that, but we do have alternate routes for when it's not Watopia days. So probably 75% of the time, it's gonna be a race up out to Zwift. When it's London, it will be a lap of the Surrey Hills. When it's Richmond, it will be three laps of the Richmond Hilly Course. So it's more about altitude than, than distance. And the reason it's called the T at the top race is because we have a sponsor which I kind of let slip on Facebook earlier. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail about them, but basically they are enabling me to be able to periodically offer free gifts. Picked at random. It's not going to be to the winner. It might occasionally be to the winner if there's an exceptional performance, but more likely it's going to be, it's an exclusive t-shirt by the way, exclusive tat design t-shirt, T at the top design t-shirt. And most of, most likely, I will pick a name at random from the riders that complete it, or I will 
ask you to put a comment on the vlog or the live stream saying why you think you deserve the t-shirt and I'll pick my favorite comment. Um, or if you have a, an incredible FTP increase due to one of these races, maybe that'll be a reason to offer a, a t-shirt. So a few different incentives may be thrown in there. Um, so that's that one. And that'll be starting next Monday. Hopefully, I'm just waiting for Zwift confirmation, but it should be starting next Monday from 6.45 p.m. British summer time. We're also going to turn the Wednesday European two-for-one ride into a crit race so that we keep that slot. It's been increasingly difficult to get riders, ride leaders for that race, mainly because of the weather. Um, so we'll take the requirement out and the commitment out of any one person having to turn up each week and we'll turn that into a quick fire, quick, quick fire crit race, which will be, I'm thinking, only a few laps. So say Watopia, I don't know, three laps, the volcano counterclockwise, London, three laps, classic, and Richmond, three laps of the flat. I think they all work out, that would all work out about 12, 13K, something like that. Or maybe actually we'd even shorten it number of laps even further because you'd have the 4K leading up to the start of the lap on most of those courses. So anyway, it's going to be like a quick fire thing, nice short race. So I'll get the confirmation of that onto the, uh, onto the forum as soon as I can. That's it. We've got Tour de Lakes coming up very soon, only 10 days away. Um, I'm hoping this double vision thing sorts itself out. My knee seems to be okay where I haven't ridden for a week. Um, so fingers crossed I'll be, I'll be good for that. We put, I put three routes together from 160 something kilometers, 120 something kilometers, and 111 kilometers with varying degrees of difficulty as well in terms of hills. Uh, but I do think everybody wanted to include the iconic climbs around there being Hard Knot, Rhino's Pass, Honister Pass. So depending on how determined everybody is to get up those climbs, will determine which route we use. But to be honest, I'll be quite happy to keep it relatively flat and do just one of those maybe, <laughs> so that uh, not to put too much strain on my kneecaps. But we'll see how it goes. Um, I've run out of words again, so I'm gonna jump on my bike, get myself back home and see if England can get themselves into a World Cup final. Catch you next time. Thank you.